ready to go. Before the speech, I'd like to share with you a little story about American friend Alice. Alice has learned Chinese for almost three years. At her boyfriend's birthday party one day, she gave him a green cap as a gift. And when she came back to the dorm and talked with her two Chinese dorm mates, she spoke simple Chinese. 我送给了我男朋友一顶绿帽子,他很开心. Literally, it means I gave my boyfriend a green cap and he's happy. However, all of a sudden, both of her two Chinese friends burst into laughter. Do you know why? Because according to Chinese culture, giving somebody a green cap means you betray him in a relationship. You cheat on him, you have an affair with another person. Well, so if you have a boyfriend from China, be careful. <laughs> Don't give him a green cap as a gift. He will definitely refuse to wear it. Well, from this little story, we may notice that course cultural communication is not easy. Translation is not so easy due to cultural differences. With the development of science and technology, we have many very advanced modern translation apps, devices, and even Google Translation, the online translation engine, to help us understand a foreign language. It seems that in 21st century, translation becomes much easier. However, we have to realize that language itself is not only a barrier that hinders international communication up the top of Babel. Actually, language is part of culture, as every language belongs to a certain culture. Well, wow, it's hard. <laughs> Oh, good to go, great. Yeah, that's the sentence I want to say. Huh. At the same time, language is also the carrier, reflector, and the situation of the culture. The cultural gap between two totally different languages, like English and Chinese, is harder not to crack for all the communicators and the translators, as each language, yeah, great, is unique in history, social system, physical environment, religion, customs, etc. Well, then you can know that language and culture, they are actually related to each other closely. So if you want to translate, you should be very careful. When translating the Chinese character Long, a lot of translators struggled and argued for its most appropriate translation because the simple translation dragon provided by a translation engine like Google Translate cannot satisfy them because it cannot convey the real meaning of Chinese law in Chinese culture. When we are talking about the Western dragons, what's on your mind? Probably you are thinking of such kind of monster yeah, where is it? Where is the monster? Yeah, here it is. How horrifying, okay? <laughs> yeah, it has very huge pair of wings and can breathe out of fire to attack people. And in many Western stories, these kind of dragons, they catch beautiful ladies and a princess. But don't worry, eventually, it will be killed by a very handsome prince, a brave knight. Am I right? So it is vicious, evil, isn't it? However, in China, it's a totally different story. Let's see the picture. Hopefully, it will work. Yeah, great. So here's the Chinese long. You can tell the difference. It is able to fly, but doesn't have wings. Instead of bringing out fire, actually, it usually sprays water to protect people, to help people um, fight against drought as a river guardian. So Chinese law actually is a very auspicious 
respectable animal worshipped by all the human beings, all the Chinese people, as a symbol of power and strength. Chinese emperors in past, they think that themselves as the true sons of the dragon from the heaven. And the babies who are born in the dragon in Chinese zodiac expect to be very excellent, smart, outstanding, wealthy, anything, you know, in the future. That's why Chinese dragon and Chinese dragon babies are very popular among the people. Even some parents deliberately choose the yellow dragon to give birth to dragon babies. Well, since there is a huge difference between long and dragon, how could we translate? Some translators suggest that we could add Chinese in front of dragon, put it in front of the dragon as a modifier to emphasize the differences of these two different animals. Well, other translators, they think that we could use transliteration by using the Chinese character's pronunciation, long, as the corresponding translation. However, the thing is long, it itself in English had its own meaning as an opposite adjective for short, as you know, right? Although Chinese long, well, it's really long, as you can see in the picture, right? Finally, translator decided to add one more O into this word to create a new word, long, for Chinese dragons. Here we go, we can see that how difficult the translation is and how cultural elements influence translating. When we are translating cultural load expressions, we should be particularly careful. Let's read the following sentence. Where is the sentence? Yeah, you can see it. Here, here it is. The goalkeeper is Achilles' heel. What does it mean? Yeah, it means the goalkeeper is the only fatal weakness in his team. How do you know that? Obviously, because you're a Westerner. You have the background information about Achilles' story. However, when this sentence is literally translated into Chinese, most of the Chinese people cannot understand it at all because Achilles' heel is a culturally loaded expression related to Greek mythology, which is quite unfamiliar to Chinese people. Then how could we deal with it? We could either omit the image of Achilles' heel in this sentence, paraphrasing the whole sentence into the goalkeeper is the only fatal weakness in his team, or we could add some explanation or annotation to it to explain who Achilles is. That's our way. When we are translating cultural load expressions, we know that it's difficult. But even for some universal substance that exists in every country, such as wind, people from different countries may have different association to it. Charles Dickens the very famous British writer in 19th century wrote in David Copperfield, how many winter days have I seen him standing blue-nosed in the snow and the east wind? So how do you feel about east wind? It must be harsh, cold, isn't it? However, when Chinese people, they are reading the Chinese version of this sentence, they feel quite differently, because according to their life experience, east wind should be warm, pleasant, like a spring breeze. In China, we have a lot of poems to praise east wind, like one less east wind adorns a thousand trees with flowers. How beautiful it is. Why Westerners and the Easterners feel quite differently about the same wind? Because of the geography, right? Because of the difference in geographic culture. We live in the opposite parts of the world and have different kinds of East wind. 
That's why translation is so difficult. Even though you can translate correctly, it doesn't mean your target language readers can feel the same way the author expects. Okay, right now, I'd like to share with you another story. Sometimes translation may cause more serious problems. This story is about Li Hongzhang. Okay, it is a, a Central American diplomatic incident 100 years ago. Li Hongzhang, one top official in China during Qing Dynasty, was invited to visit the USA. And one day, he was hosting a banquet for American officials in a very popular American restaurant. As the banquet started, he delivered a speech according to Chinese custom of modesty. And this speech was literally translated into English and was misunderstood by Americans. Here is the translation. You can have a look. Okay, it's not yet. Yeah, that is the translation I want to show you, okay? I'm happy to have all of you here today. Although these dishes are coarse and not delicious and not good to show my respect for you, I hope you enjoy them. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's your reaction. How do you feel about it? Confused? Unhappy, right? Well, when this translation was shown in local newspaper and uh, the restaurant owner actually flew into a rage, you know, he insisted that Li should show him, the, show him the evidence of which dish is not delicious and which dish is not well made. Otherwise, Li should apologize to him for his intentionally damaging the reputation of his restaurant. How awkward it was. But actually, what Li said is only a polite expression formulaic apply expression, conveying the meaning of self-modesty and showing his respect for the guests. Using an opposite lecture form to indicate one's intention, real intention, is a unique cultural phenomenon that is very common in Asian culture, in Asian countries. For example, okay, if one day um, you pay a visit to your Chinese friend's house, you may say, your house is very beautiful, I like it very much. But quite often, that house owner may reply, no, 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 it is not beautiful. No, 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 it's just so-so, or welcome to my humble abode. Chinese people, they usually don't want to brag about what they have in front of others, according to their custom of modesty. It is not very easy for Westerners to understand Easterners over modesty. So how can we deal with it? You'd better translate in this way. Yeah. The cuisine of your country is really great. It is my great honor to have a chance to entertain you with them. Despite the difference in language form, actually, this translation is equivalent to the original text in content functionally. After all, the real function and the real purpose of this speech is to improve South American relationship rather than to destroy it. Am I right? From this example, then, you may realize now, translating is far more than simply deciphering and converting one set of linguisticals into another set. Cultural elements must be taken into consideration. If you want to do business in China, you'd better know more about Chinese culture besides its language. Let's read the following advertisement in English, okay? Your lips will know it, but your hips won't show it. Undoubtedly, it is very excellent, very successful advertisement for chocolate, as for you, right? But if it is literally translated into Chinese, most Chinese people may feel uncomfortable or even offended. And eventually, this product, this chocolate, 
will lose the majority of the Asian market in the end. Why? Because hips are something of a taboo in Asian culture. Generally speaking, Asians are more conservative and traditional than Westerners. It is not so appropriate to talk about hips in public, not to mention, you know, show them directly in the advertisement. That's horrible, you know, for Asians. Considering the cultural differences, we'd better translate in this way. It's tasty and guilt-free. Guilt-free here is really excellent euphemism to hint that this chocolate is low in sugar and you won't gain weight because of eating it. To sum up, from those typical examples we can see, it is really not easy to translate from one language to another because language is closely, tightly connected to and greatly influenced by culture. When you are translating, if you can increase your cross-cultural awareness and sensitivity, you can do more than you think to help cross-cultural communication, literature exchange, diplomatic negotiation, and international business. And as a college student or administrator or professor or instructor in our university, course cultural awareness and sensitivity can also help you avoid an awkward moment like a green, green cap example, do you remember? <laughs> when you are working and studying in, with international students. Thank you.